Starfer and Vieira is a Black-owned business in local Toronto. They were inspired by creating a distinct brand that could be used to give back to the community. Their vision is to build a popular brand that is recognizable. Their mission is to provide the finest complimentary pieces to help you complement your confidence. Well, listeners, we have something special for you guys. We have partnered up with Sarfone Vieira to give you guys a discount code to use for the month of February. As you know, February is the month of love. And here is the discount code. TJP20. I'm going to say it again. TJP20. So you can use that at your final purchase at safro fieracom This is their website, safro fieracom So make sure you guys use that discount code before February 15th. Once again, February 15th is the last time to use the discount code. Have a great one and let's tune back into the podcast. Mm-hmm. All right, welcome back, family and friends. As you can see, there's something different. It's only he, us girls. Yeah, boy. It ain't here. He he's wanna. not here. And it's very weird because he's usually in the middle, in the center. Here, me and my sister are some, usually some more. Uh, Why can we be friends? Why can we be friends? My friend is not here, but now I have more. Uh, room. room. Yeah. Around, it's weird, but um, I'm excited that we get to talk about what we want to talk about without him talking. I was saying him, but it's Nana who's not here. Yeah. So anyways, how was your... I mean, actually, it's been rough. I'm not going to lie because we were supposed to do this earlier. We were supposed to record this and it was a hot mess. Um, We had to go back and forth and uh, it wasn't working where we wanted to record. So we had to come back and it's just... We're here now. Yes. Okay. That's are. all that matters. Thanks We're the here. Lord. And we have a nice topic that is interesting. Um, it's definitely, I don't know if it's a more, I think it's an everyone topic, but mostly in a, gr- a girl topic, mm-hmm. you know? So we decided to do something between us because, um, yeah. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to dive into comparison. Ooh. Me versus her. Us versus yeah. the world. Having conversation. This is a topic that honestly, like I have been struggling with for the past couple of months, Mm -hmm. which is very, I don't know why it's coming all of a sudden, but it's been a struggle that I've, I've noticed. And so we're going to have some deep conversation and we're going to get a little vulnerable, but I think it's going to be, um, helpful, not only for women, because it's not just us women, but men also deal with comparison, even though they act like they don't, but. And also I would say even our younger girls, younger boys of our age, teenagers, because mm-hmm. that's the de- that's definitely going on and they're going to grow right. up into that. So at least mm-hmm. try to give them a little bit of advice on how to start. Young teenagers are going uh, going into the adult, like, you know, 16 yeah. to 18 round. Right. Like and so comparison, once again, is something that you need to deal with now because it does carry on into your adult life for the young people who are listening. Mm-hmm. Um, trust me, I'm dealing with it now. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's get into it. I think we're going to start off with like talking about where we first, I guess, starting noticing, started noticing comparison. comparison. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to go first? Um, I would say, oh, definitely when we're small, for mm-hmm. sure. I think even uh, starting probably like, I don't really remember much. I have a bad memory, but I remember from like, I think maybe seven. Oh Yeah seven eight you know that age like i i can remember just i guess like the little stuff like in school like i would try to compare myself to the other girls and then as i grew up i think mostly what i remember is in i think it was what age are you in grade three i think like a um, you're nine no yeah something like that yeah yeah eight or nine eight or nine i would i think one you compare the skin tones what color you are with Mm. the uh they're white or they're a different ethnicity or a different culture background yeah. than you. Um, they way they, they looked, they're prettier than me or they, or why does she have that type of hair or those like, or why does she attract boys and I don't mm. like that type of thing. So you have a little, uh, oh, no. here, there, you know, that's what sisters do. You got, you got each you other. You got to look out for each other, you know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the first time I kind of noticed it. I don't really, I don't think I've noticed it with boys really, but it was more like I noticed it with girls. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think for me, I'm even surprised you didn't talk about me and me and you as siblings. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get there. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to get okay. there. Don't, don't you worry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. For me, I think when, what I remember at least, um, it was more so, uh, yeah, like in school, I think around grade three too, like grade three, four. 
five, getting into middle school, as they would say. But mm -hmm. for us, it was elementary school. But yeah, I, I think it was the same thing as Janet, like comparing myself in a sense where actually I lied. Let me bring that back because mm -hmm. there's actually one kid and he was a boy, too. OK, it was a boy. And me and uh, me and him were basically competing on how smart we were in getting good grades. Mm -hmm. So he he was really intelligent. I'm not going to lie, like very smart kid and so i would compete to try to get better grades than him and i would compare myself like oh like if he got better than me i have to do better than him like it was always a competition and I, and whenever i didn't like measure up to what he got i always felt defeated or like i wasn't smart enough or i wasn't good enough and so that was actually the first time i remember and it com yeah it was looking back at it that was not good <laughs> It was not good for my self-esteem at all, at all. For but yeah, sure. honestly, like now trickling into like how we grew up in African household because an African household comparison is mm -hmm. like, it, yeah, it's like, a part of. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, every it's a natural thing. I don't know exactly. You it, in every household, you can know that's a commonality right. between us. So yeah, definitely getting into this like um, the comparison between me and her. Honestly, it hurt me. Um, can you give some details because yes, we have talked I, about this it's not yeah. the first time we've spoken about it because I always felt like Jenna was always like I was hiding. envious of her of course but I never really talked because you know I'm a shy little girl and I just keep no, you try to, yeah, you suppress inside. your yeah. yeah one thing about me guys you won't see like I can hide I don't wear my emotions on my sleeve if I'm feeling things you won't see it but that's a bad thing of course but also a good thing I mean I can tell when Janet is is trying to suppress her feelings that, that's when it has built to a point where it's, uh, it's showing out or <laughs> no but I'm a, I'm, I'm a psychologist okay I okay. know what I'm talking about I'm telling you you can't always okay okay I can trust me I just don't say anything because I'm waiting for Janet to talk but that's but not good no, but then you're telling me it's not good, but you do the same. You I suppress mean, all your feelings. I'm trying to change. The Lord is changing me. He's humbling my heart. But now I'm expressing myself more. I used to express myself more before until we had a little situation and it, it kind of flip-flopped. So it's now her expressing and me <laughs> being quiet. Weird. But, you know, that's how God works. He, he works at different times, different points. Anyways, I'm rambling. Let's get back to what I was going to say. Um, Yeah, like... One of the things I would say, like, grades, grades was a big thing, mm. and boys was a big thing. I just felt like no one liked me, and everyone liked Bernice. Was, I felt so <laughs> <laughs> ugly, like, the ugly duckling out of the three. I felt like, I'm not even going to lie. I'm telling you right now. I felt like the ugly duckling. I felt like, like, I think it was maybe ages 16 to, like... I, it was high school high because school? we went to high school together. together yeah. You guys know, like, we're one year apart. So I, I trailed her everywhere. I was in her shadow. Yeah. Um, One of the biggest, biggest things was in high school. Like, I felt like I was like, are you Bernice's sister? And I just lived in that shadow. I lived in the shadow of my sister. So it was kind of like every time I wanted to compare and be better than her or maybe try to make a name for myself. But mm -hmm. I always fell back in that shadow of being Bernice's little sister. Um, so that, and, um, yeah. And grades was not my forte. I like, I wasn't as, I would say intelligent at that time. I know I, I am intelligent, but grades, my grades weren't good. And my parents looked at me like, oh, Bernice is so good. And she, she's such an A student. And but she the problem, home, the, the, problem is, right away. <laughs> the problem is I wasn't an A plus, like I wasn't and a straight A like student. It, it sounded, it, it literally, me looking back at my report card, I wasn't a straight A student. I had some C's in there, okay? But the A's overrided the C's. No, but the funny thing, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I felt like. The funny thing is like, when Janet talks about, oh, I was under the shadow of, of Bernice, I felt like that with my older sister. Like, I felt like it was... You, oh, like yes, ja Like, Christiana, older, like... Older yeah, like, I felt like... Like, all the boys liked her. Like, she's always... What? Even though she's four... I'm, I'm <laughs> like, she's four years older than me. I know. Me. But I always <laughs> looked at her like, oh my gosh, like, nobody's... Like... I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I felt the shadow of me makes sense, but you shadowing her. Yes, I, I mean, mean I get it. The, you did but it for thing, like a year. But the thing is, not even that. But like overall, like our the Nigerian community. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, you yeah. always. It's always Christiana, Christiana, yeah, Christiana. Yeah. They, and they, so they, they, they didn't really knew see. Us. Yeah, they didn't know. <laughs> yes, they didn't know. They never knew our names. They didn't know our names, and so it's always like, oh, your her name is Busse, and her Yoruba name is Busse. So your Busse's sister. I said. You're like, 
yeah, yeah. my name is Bumi. <laughs> like you could talk to me and say my name is yeah, like yeah. ask me what my name is. So um yeah, but I think also like in the African household, I think a lot of Africans have deal with this where yeah. they compare you to other people oh, that my. don't even belong to your family not even they don't even know what they've done before to get like to get where they're at yeah exactly or how they are now like you just see the picture of oh, oh they're don't. a doctor yeah or they're a do you know what the between, struggle between what they have know. to do and so when like whenever you compare them like whenever they compare us to oh like look at them they're doctors and they're nurses and they're You're this like, and hey. they're that it's like you wanting to pursue what you want to pursue is like you can't do that anymore because it's like oh my parents already have this uh, idea or this ideal of, of what they should, want me yeah. to be and so there's so much more pressure and so you're not you're no longer happy to be pursuing what you want it basically decreases your motivation yeah to, to and i and, and and that has happened to me i literally can say just a little bit of story the first thing i wanted to be was a dancer guys Second the first thing, thing I wanted to be the teacher. The first thing I wanted to be was a singer. But in my mind, I said that ain't gonna happen. The money, okay. Um, and then, and then it became a doctor because they would always compare, like, oh look, they're nurses, they're doctors, and they're this and they're that. And it's like, stop, pu- stop putting us to- against each other. I know. It's always gonna be a competition. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm never gonna be happy for this person because I need I want to be better. Yeah. And I feel like that's like in the Nigerian community as well. Like that's what I felt with some kids who are our age. It was always like I need to be. But better it's, it's true but it's not even it's not even kids it's the adults it's still there with them too yeah the adults like, yes you can still see, see with them the too. competition so it trickles down to their children yeah and you see how comparison if you don't get rid of it when you're a kid it gonna trickle into your adulthood uh, exactly and that yeah. definitely i'm seeing today with our parents and their friends sometimes yeah or like other, like other people yeah like, are of their age right yeah. now they do, but, and, 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 and the thing is, it's subtle. So. They may think mm-hmm. it's like it's just like oh, like we want the best for you. It's like yeah, I understand you want the best for us, and you want us to, you want to motivate us to be better. But comparing yeah. us or pitting us against somebody else, yeah, it doesn't true. help me. It doesn't motivate me. It doesn't make me feel like oh, like I'm my own person. No, mm-hmm. I have to strive to be better than this person. So the only way I can make it be better or be them or like, be them, yeah, the only yeah. way I can do that is literally do the same thing. What if I'm not good? I'm not good in sciences. <laughs> you're just doing. You're forcing the material in your head, and you know it's the same c c c c all the time and so they look at you like so why is there c (laughs) why is there c on this on this report you're not even passionate about science exactly so it's like it that right there that that kind of um molded me personally Mm -hmm. and i remember there's one time even though my parents don't show favoritism i promise you it's not favoritism (laughs) but i always felt like being the middle child i always felt like i was never good enough Mm -hmm. there's a moment where i broke down i remember i was like probably do you remember me crying in and the you, corner she cried i mean i cried a lot but like but I, <laughs> do you remember there's a time <laughs> yeah do you, do you remember the story there's so many crying no moments. but that, that but i do remember the time where i was crying and i told mommy like oh you don't love me yeah. you don't care about me like you never said, care oh my goodness <laughs> i told my no seriously what did, I say? did i and you said that day something i didn't back you up yeah like you never yeah. there for me or something like that like i felt like i was literally like an outcast mm. in your own family in my own family but it wasn't like there it was just the idea of like i was comparing i was always compared or i'm comparing myself to somebody else yeah. and it brought me to a low because i'm like am i not good enough like i don't understand like yeah. what am i not doing that you guys don't recognize mm. and that was that was the beginning of me seeking people's approval yeah that moment was like every time after that I would do things and make sure, like, yeah, somebody looked at me and be like, good job, Bernice. Whether Mm -hmm. it be with sports, whether it be with teachers, whether it be with um, friends, whether it be with in the church community, I was always seeking the approval approval from somebody else. And it wasn't just, like, a general thing. Like, I love doing what I did, but at the same time, if I didn't get somebody saying, good job, Bernice, I in my head, I already... You're like, I didn't do a good enough. I wasn't good enough. I need to do better. I know there's somebody out there that's better than me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know. It could be a good and bad thing. That's I was definitely going to say that it can be a good it can be a good thing in a sense where you can see where you can improve. Mm. Um like you're lacking something or you're not trying hard enough. Mm-hmm. Like you can aspire not to be them, but you can inspire their work ethic. Yeah. You can inspire yeah. how they got mm-hmm. there and you know, but the other way it can deteriorate you because you can want to be better and every time you want to be better you fail. Mm-hmm. So like every time you fail you get disappointed. Right. And that decreases your motivation to even do Anything, anything or a- pursue any career that mm-hmm. you want to pursue because the ultimate i can't and never reach up to right. their standards mm-hmm. so you yeah. just always feel so yeah definitely 
I think that was a struggle um, for me, for us, and it's still a struggle today. Yeah, I'm still um, currently. But battling. it's better. I would but. say it's better for me, but I'm, I think it's I it's know. gotten it it's it's done a loop for me. <laughs> it has. I'm being serious because yeah. there's a, like I don't actually I feel like I never even got rid of it or I never addressed it. Mm-hmm. I always felt like no, like it's no, like I, I have to be better because just because. <laughs> yeah. But I always felt inside of me like. See, the one thing, let me t- tell you something about myself. The one thing about me is, like, you could see me and look at me and be like, oh, she's confident. Like, she's mm-hmm. strong. She know what she wants. Yeah, I always felt like, oh. I, it's all a front. I, I, it's a front. <laughs> okay, I'll be lying to you guys. But sometimes I'm sure. No, so know. obviously not all the time. Yeah. But, like, there's moments where, like, I have self-esteem issues. Mm-hmm. Self-confidence I- issues. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like. I could portray, like, literally in the moment, I could be portraying myself, like, be bold, be confident, <laughs> walk, in the, walk in the room, like, okay. And I remember on my birthday, Mary was talking about, oh, like, when she walks in the room, there's just something confident about her. It's like, I do that because I want people to recognize. <laughs> yeah, I want people to recognize me and notice me, not mm. because I genuinely feel confident. You don't feel that in yourself. Yeah, like, there's and a difference between yeah. walking in a room and putting on a front, walking in the room and generally internally feel confident, yeah. not just outwardly, but internally feel confident. So, but yeah, I, it's a work in progress once again, like Janet said. Yeah. Um, I mean, with me, I think I kept it a lot inside, but I think I, at a point, maybe when I hit 18 mm-hmm. or something like that, I felt a point where I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care no more. Yeah. I'm me, mm-hmm. and that's what it is. At a point, there was even like grades. Like I just, I don't know what happened. There was a switch. Like it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. Like I'm never going to be yeah. th- her. I'm never going to be you. Mm-hmm. I can't. Mm-hmm. It, like God made us uniquely different. Yeah, he make us uniquely different, and with a purpose that we're supposed uniquely? to uniquely, <laughs> uniquely, like like last time. <laughs> Cover me, I watch this. We're coming up to that, but like I said, progress last time. <laughs> Guys, my mouth, my tongue is just <laughs> sorry. <laughs> she likes to make fun of me. Anyways, as I was saying, he made us unique in different ways. So mm-hmm. like when I think about myself now, I think about like um I still do want to pursue different things. Like one of the things that like I kept telling myself is like I really love to dance. And I know maybe it's not gonna be a career that I wanna mm-hmm. do, but I want to take dance lessons. I I, I want to, and I want to do it by myself mm-hmm. to not compare to f- like just feel free to in feel, your body. I know you're gonna compare free. like obviously like yeah. other people, but I don't care. Yeah. That, like more like my family or mm-hmm. if I've gone with a friend or something, you, you innately compare because yeah. you're close to them and yeah. you're, you're gonna see if you're doing better. Mm-hmm. But I kind of just want to be me, be free, mm-hmm. and I just love dance because it's an expression. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the part where I, and teaching also like i wanted to do that too but i guess in a different atmosphere it can kind of lead into something else it may not i have to actually be a teacher Mm -hmm. but i can teach students i can Mm -hmm. mentor them so yeah that's yeah where i'm at (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say like obviously like we are we're still a young generation okay i'm not gonna yeah we're old i'm not gonna say that we're old (laughs) but like coming up now Mm-hmm. you can see in social social media has changed oh my goodness. everything and that's the reason why i said comparison has come back up again it's, it's not just it's not just it's, it wasn't just because it was through like family and like your circle of friends and things like that through school as you're coming yeah. up getting older but now it's like social media has done damage D- yeah. damage detrimental damage to a lot of people and a lot of people are not admitting admitting it admitting uh, admitting it she's getting the tongue twist <laughs> a lot of people are not admitting it and they're yeah. just and they're constantly going back onto social media especially mm-hmm. instagram okay that's what i'm going for you guys instagram you guys are trapping young kids <laughs> even adults you're Facebook, trapping no, other ways but you're Instagram trapping most, you're trapping yeah, right young now. kids and adults and you've trapped me at one point <laughs> literally you almost got you me trapped all of us you almost got me but i i said god that's why i got god god he literally opened my eyes and said mm-hmm. fall back well like what would you say like i know it's all about pictures but what area i don't know when you get on instagram like so for me how do you feel for me what what happened was 
I love to sing, okay? I love to sing. And they know that I like I love to sing. Mm-hmm. But I always was afraid of my own voice because I always compared my voice to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so I have a few singers on my <laughs> Instagram that are amazing, like mm-hmm. amazing singers. And I know them personally. It's like I've worked with them or I, I go to church with them or something like that. And so when I hear their voice, I said, hmm, God, why is my voice not like this? Why is my voice not sounding the way I want it to enough. sound? Am I not good enough? Like, look at them. They're pursuing mm-hmm. music and they're singing and they're creating songs. And that's and, where you want to be. And that's where I want to and be. And you, you, you go back to the dream you had when At you one were of younger, yes. And you're like, damn. Like, if I just pursued Yes. And so me like looking that, at yeah. that, it's like I trap myself. And so I would start saying, like, I'm not good enough. I'm never going to make it. My voice is never going to be up to that level. Yeah. But it's like, why? Why am I jealous? of something that God created. God is so big. He has so many aspects to him. So I know there's one aspect of him that he's given me that I could use to get to another audience. The same, the audience that I, like, the audience that they have is completely different for the audience that I have. Yeah. God gave me different, like everybody has different audiences. So your voice is made for different people. Mm -hmm. I can't pursue the same audience that they have. Why would God do that? He's like, that's he not didn't, where he I'm didn't, directing Yeah, he to. didn't create us to be in yeah. competition with one another. He created us to be a one, one body. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like the body, it says there's one body with different functions. Mm-hmm. We all have a head, uh, 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 shoulders. We have arms, legs, feet. But it's used to do different, for different things. things. For different things. Are you yeah. telling me you're going to use your feet for your head? No. Yeah. And so that's why I, I literally had to literally log off. Mm. It even got me to the point of comparing myself and my body. Mm-hmm. I never used to care. That is a big thing in Instagram. Body wise, the the Coke bottle. <laughs> Shit. It ain't normal to have a Coke bottle. <laughs> not everybody is supposed and to have the same. Can, not everybody's supposed to have that same body type. Yeah. Not everybody's supposed to look the same. Yeah, I don't. I literally, no, I'm telling you, like, this has been a struggle, like, mentally, where I started looking at females and saying, like, hmm, envying their envying their body. Their because body. you know why? Because I also desire to be loved. And mm-hmm. when I see that, oh, like, oh, men only like this. Mm-hmm. So I start comparing, saying, listen, that's the reason why I'm comparing, because I want to be loved. You have a, the thing is, like, comparing yep. comes from an insecurity or something that you desire. So if you feel like, oh, I want to be loved, you're going to desire, you're going to look at how you can attract love. Mm-hmm. And so you go to Instagram and you notice, okay, people only are attracted to women who have the big butt and the big And that's top, all you're seeing. And that's all you're seeing. And that's how, that's all they're portraying, portraying out there on Instagram. So you can compare yourself to a woman that has the same body and yeah. say, listen, what, what can I do to look like this? And it's over and over and over, over every, again. Every picture you slide It's the same to, thing. The same body. Or it doesn't even have to do with body. It could be with money. Yeah. How they flaunt their money. Flaunting their the, money. the things that they can buy. And you're like, and then you do things out of your, your character. character to gain that money or gain that body or to do the surgery. I'm not coming about. I'm not coming against anyone, but if you don't even have one self love for yourself, mm-hmm. of course you're gonna start doing things. But that's the thing. Sorry, this is gonna trickle into something else. But it's okay, that's people who way. say like, "Oh, you could do whatever you like," and 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 uh do plastic surgery i only i did plastic surgery for myself mm-hmm. honey let's just keep it 110 percent. yeah you didn't do it for yourself you did it because you saw somebody else who you who look like that, something like you that inspired to look like. and you noticed something about them that you wanted yeah and you don't have and you don't have yeah why like listen if and that's the thing the enemy gets you so nicely little things it tricks little you things. to think like no i love my body i love the way <laughs> i look i just want i you know i just I just wanted to do it just because I don't, like, I don't no. do it for no man. I didn't do it for nobody. <laughs> no, girl, no. I said, no, you, cause listen, if I had money or no boy, no, go sorry, if I had money, I didn't have God and my self-esteem was low. Don't you think I would do the same thing and enhance my, my chest? Mm-hmm. Probably would. It's very easy to, because it's so easy to get trapped into that um, idea of like only a big chest with big, big butts and, and, and curves mm-hmm. is the only thing that you're going to, that's, that's how you're going to get about in life. That's mm-hmm. the only thing that's going to get you money. That's the only thing that's going to allow you to find a man that truly loves you. But what you know about that, there's a different audience for Once a again, different group of people. Right. And we're a different audience. We're seeking a different audience. Mm-hmm. We're not seeking the worldly audience. We're seeking the godly honest, go- godly audience mm-hmm. of Christian male men who are looking for the heart and looking for the mind mm-hmm. and not looking for the outer. Yes, the outer comes after, of course, mm-hmm. but the first seeking, are they uh, Christian, uh, Christ followers? Are they in their word? Mm-hmm. Are they, you know, doing those type of things? Not 
the other stuff, the outer appearance, which can just it's like a facade like I'm telling you like <laughs> you go the, into the inner person then they don't even have the personality right. that you want or, right you know what i mean so but social media has yeah. definitely changed that um my per- sorry yeah no no my perspective mm-hmm. it has definitely blurred my perspective um and we're here to allow like basically tell you guys if you have to log off of instagram for do a it. month do, do it, it. <laughs> I did. I deleted I did, it. I did. I deleted it off my phone. I had to, or for periods of time, maybe not forever. But yeah, like I, I literally had to to take off Instagram off my phone because I realized, like, I couldn't even be creative anymore. Mm-hmm. I couldn't think. I couldn't be who I wanted to be, who God has called me to be, because I was so focused on like, okay, so what? What? Are, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, they're they're creating music. Oh, let me go try and write a song or something, or let me go try and do something that mm-hmm. is outside of me. Like it's not natural. It didn't come naturally or something that God has given me naturally Mm -hmm. it's something that I'm like forcing to come so it's not it's not genuine yeah you're just doing it for likes and I think what an important thing is I'm on that journey right now and I'm sure she's on that journey Mm -hmm. of self-love honestly like once you start loving yourself and knowing that the creator who created you is loves you those are the only things you you need me, need me, because God has created those little unique parts of mm-hmm. me, and I'm just figuring those things out now. And it's a good self discovery. Um, so, and once you love yourself, you feel more confident, mm-hmm. but generally confident, internally confident, not mm-hmm. out- outwardly. You can look confident, but you got to do inwardly and outwardly to feel extremely mm-hmm. confident. Um, so, how does that? How can we combat comparison in our world today? Um, like currently and yeah i think obviously self-love and understanding that Mm -hmm. but like i said before if you gotta delete the social media Mm -hmm. start there Mm -hmm. it's literally start there at least for a week yeah so that you can literally reset your mind Mm -hmm. to know what is reality and what is not reality because social media is an illusion. It is a space for people to pretend to be something that's the that highlight reel that they want. Literally, put on. <laughs> that's it why they call a sp- it a highlight yeah, reel. <laughs> like they literally, it's a space for them to put something out there that they desire to be real. Mm. So if you see people who look like their life is filled with happiness and joy, so, like great, it's awesome. But remember, life is not always like Don't that. Don't take everything. Don't take it like literal. literally. <laughs> not not everything that they put out there is true. Mm-hmm. They could literally be having the worst day of their life and they could still put out like a video of them smiling. <laughs> it's not hard. It's not. Right? It, and it's like, so if for me, that's what I had to do. I had to literally step back, take, I, I felt like it was even God telling me, there's multiple times where God they told me. Put it down. <laughs> yeah, there's multiple times where God was telling me like, yo, take take it off. And not even like that. It's like, this is not what I'm. This is not what I want you to look at. No, this he's is not the compare. This yeah, is not like he literally. Picture. Let me you tell know? you something. So. Oh gosh, God is revelation <laughs> in the podcast. All right, no. <laughs> transparency. But there was a moment, maybe a couple of days ago, where I was looking through. I think it was either Snapchat. I had to do, do something on Instagram, so that's why I was on Instagram. <laughs> or it was Instagram or YouTube, one of the two. Um, and I was scrolling and I was watching, and then I hear clink, clink clink i said what is that clinking sound i don't even know what that is and so i left it alone and i was scrolling through once again and that time i was also like i felt the comparison part getting into me like envying people and and looking into that and so i heard it clink 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 and then i looked and it was the belt and the belt was clinking clinking and but i've never heard the belt clink like that before okay Mm -hmm. this is the first time like i've actually been become become aware of it so it was clinking and i was like what does what what does the belt have to do with it i went back maybe a few minutes later and I looked at it and it said, the belt of truth, armor of God. Mm. And I was like, I was like, God, I said, God, <laughs> he's speaking to you. God, we were talking about, I don't know, this week of God speaking, I think, or the voice of God. I think the past, past last, talk, week, yeah. last week, no, yeah. he speaks in How different speaks. ways, not speaks. In yes, just like yes, yes. Him. And so when I, when I realized like the belt of truth, I was like, Yes, I need to understand what the truth of God is. What does God say about me that is true? And so whenever I feel like, and it has been couple in the past couple of days, whenever I feel like I'm comparing myself or my, my, my reality has been distorted some kind of way because of what I've watched or seen, 
I always turned to the belt of truth. I said, nope, that's not what God says. Got to turn away from it. Mm -hmm. And so when God told me, like, it was literally like, honey, it's a distraction. Mm -hmm. Get rid of Instagram. It's not honest. It's not what is true, what is right, what it's, is just. It's the truth. It was literally the truth. I was like, yeah, God, just maybe just one more week. Let me just let me just do it because we were fasting before, right? Yes, yes. And I should have deleted it then, but my my inner core, Satan. my flesh, <laughs> the flesh enemy, weak. <laughs> the enemy was like, no, you need it. You don't. You can you can fast and have social media at the same time. It was a distraction. And you remember Nana said, oh, you should just delete it. She's like, no, I don't need to delete it. Remember? <laughs> she's like, I don't I said, I don't, it. I don't, I, I, I put a timer on it yeah, too. Yeah, put a timer I, on I said, it. I could take that timer off anytime. <laughs> like, I can literally be, enter the code and she be like, to her put We're like, 15 oh, okay. minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. That 15 minutes can take up my whole two hours of my day. Yeah. Scrolling. And so literally after the fast, I said, okay, God, I heard you. I heard. I heard you. I, I'll put it away. God says it many times for you to hear. I heard. He knows we're stubborn, so he has to keep telling us. Yeah, so my thing for combating is definitely delete the things that are make, distracting you, mm -hmm. that are allowing you to um, have this false reality of that you're not good enough yes. or you'll never be or you'll never measure up to anything or you're not worth anything or you're not valuable that's what you need to delete. So you need me yeah. to some some um, cleaning of house. House cleaning right now. Cleaning of house. House <laughs> cleaning. <laughs> I usually catch you on this thing. Wow, my eyes. <laughs> okay. House cleaning. That's what I meant. It's not cleaning of house. House cleaning. If you have to do house cleaning, sit with yourself. Sit with God and see what you need to get rid of and clean that house out. Basically, what she's doing is finding contentment, not comparison. Yes. Okay, that's basically what she's trying to do because we can't compare out here. How long are we going to compare? You're going to go on a be, cycle forever. Yeah. You just got to be like, okay, this is me and that's it. Mm -hmm. You can't change me. I can't be doing all these things. No. Right. You know? He's like, oh, just, right. you know. And contentment is the antidote, okay, mm -hmm. for comparison. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the okay. cure. It's the cure. <laughs> that's one of the cures. There, there's other cures that are... Not of the world, obviously. Yeah. But definitely, like Janice said, self-love. Delete the distraction. House cleaning. Mm -hmm. Okay? What was the other one you were going to say? Remain in your word, Lord. Yep. The Come Lord on. says remain in his word. He gave it. Yeah. Just to keep telling you. Mm -hmm. Keep reminding you. Keep putting those truths into yeah, you. And not the lies of the world. And yeah. lies of Instagram that yeah. are telling you that you're not good enough. Or the yeah. pictures that keep reoccurring in your head, reoccurring. Because mm -hmm. when you see things multiple times, yeah. it becomes your truth. Yeah. It literally mm -hmm. becomes your truth. Mm -hmm. So, um, a verse for us. That you well, I have a couple of verses. I yeah. mean, there's multiple verses in the Bible. Oh, yeah, for sure. To be honest, yeah. that, that will help you combat these comparisons or these lies mm -hmm. that the enemy yeah even your mind will infiltrate and allow you to believe mm -hmm. but we're here to switch that and give you a reset button yes okay we're gonna give you a few I um think we have like two on deck yeah there's, i mean there's a lot but this one is um from romans 12 verse 6 it says this is from the msg version it says let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. What? I'm going to, like, if I wanted a tattoo, I would tattoo that on my, my body. Read it again. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other mm. or trying to be something we aren't. How many, pe uh, How many people in this world, uh, like, aspire to be something, something that they're, they're not? not. Even me, sometimes. Like, <laughs> even I want to be, I want to be doctor. I want to be nurse. I remember I that. This. Sorry, this is going no, back, I but I remember the time that I told my parents. Oh I'm, my gosh! I'm sorry, not, mommy. I'm not coming. I'm not becoming a doctor. <laughs> I was I'm sorry. There. I was like, oh man, this is not. That good. was a hard time. Looking good. It was hard, but I literally had to say it out loud so that so I you could know. That, yeah, okay, like it's not, not me. me. It's yeah. not me. And I felt so much relief. Mm -hmm. Yes, it may suck for you. Like, obviously, your parents want the best for you. Don't get it twisted. If they mm -hmm. aspire you to be something, yeah. it's because they think that that's the best for you. Mm -hmm. But you know, and God knows who he made you to be. Yeah. 
So let's follow what God has called you to be. Not what your parents have called you to be. Yes, they are designed to be um, your guidance God, and yeah. your your advisors and great stuff like that. You but the almighty advisor, thing, yeah. the counselor, the great counselor is Jesus. That's mm-hmm. who you need to go to as your almighty, the great counselor. That's who you need to go to. Mm-hmm. Yes, listen to your parents. Take it into um What's the consideration. word? Consideration. Consideration. <laughs> Thank you. See, that's why we're sisters, because they just complete the sentence. sentence. <laughs> but yeah, take it into consideration. Like, don't obviously dismiss what they're saying as long if, as long as it's it's truth. Yeah, it's a valid. Yeah, job but that's but at the same good. time, don't just take it and be like, run, run with, with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> if they say you should be a doctor, it don't mean you're supposed to be a doctor. They just aspire to be something greater. So you could take that and be like, oh, my parents want me to be something great. Mm. Okay, I. T- I can Read see in between that. the lines. I can see that. That's what they want me to be, something great. Mm-hmm. Not that you... Because some parents, they just, you know... They they, they, they tell the best jobs because that's what they know. Th- that's what they know, yeah. Like they don't know any better. And especially from immigrants who are coming. Right. The best, doctor, the best job is probably a doctor or a, med- a lawyer something or a med- medical yeah, professional some, yeah, that makes right. a good amount of money because yeah. they didn't make... Exactly. Right? They're exactly. looking to, for you to be better than them. Right. 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 Okay, this is the next one. Well, and it goes can- along with our... Um, this one goes along with our serving, right? Yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah. Um, so uh, as she looks for that, our another way you can combat uh, comparison is serving others. Um, guys, it's not about us. What was the word? Oh, sorry, it's not about us. Like honestly, um, serving others brings me joy. Um, serving little uh, teenagers or girls little girls little boys even in camp we used to serve the children like that is what brings you joy instead of comparing yourself going to a soup kitchen i know right now that we're in covid and lockdown we can't do much of that but we can definitely serve others in other ways maybe you pick up a call you're serving them by listening to them just listening to them or you're serving them by um bringing them groceries you know Mm -hmm. dropping it at their door or something like that or serving them having a virtual game night or a virtual call um we could do different type of things in our situation that will still um be as adequate for the time that we're in right now and and for serving others because definitely it's super super important for us not to be selfish you know Mm -hmm. um a lot of people think about themselves and 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 Like, how much money can I make? How big can I get? How successful Mm. can I get? And it's like, no, God's like, no, that's not what it's about. It's about serving people. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's how we fulfill ourselves to self, to fulfill ourselves in this world is to serve others Mm -hmm. because we can't, uh, we can stack up all our riches and all our money or whatever, but our soul is lost. Right. That's why people can, celebrities can kill themselves and they have uh, or can uh yeah who can murder themselves or or, or do things out of whack just right. wild things even regular um citizens can do wild things mm-hmm. with all they have but they still lose their soul because they don't, they're empty right like you're not gonna take the money with you you're mm-hmm. not gonna take the car with the 10 mm-hmm. cars that you have mm-hmm. so yeah. Sorry, it took me a Sorry. while. But <laughs> she, was going, she was going on a rant over there. But it's okay. That's It's important to, to understand. Um, here is something. It has to do with uh, humility. Because I think comparison and understanding that your pride can be in your way. Mm-hmm. Um, it says here, um, Philippians 2 verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Mm-hmm. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interest, but... It, but each of you to the interest of others. Like you said, turn yourself, turn your, turn the spotlight away from yourself. Yep. And onto others. And onto others. If you do that, you'll find so much joy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel the pressure. Like, listen, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. I've done my part, but it's about you. I want to see something greater in you. If you, that's what I have to find. Like, that's what gives me joy too. When I find Mm -hmm. like, I'm not focusing on myself. I feel so much lighter. I feel like, oh my gosh, like I could do this again and again. Because like, you feel like weighted down because all the attention is on you. Right. Like you feel like you have to be the breadwinner. You have to be the, mm-hmm. you know, everything. And it gets tiring. It does. Like you get, you push your, to someone else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Instead of just me. So. Yeah. Shine the spotlight on somebody else and not on yourself. And this is another verse too. It says, um, this is 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12. 
It says, we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. Mm. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. There's another version that says they lack knowledge. Yeah. You lack knowledge. The reason why the reason why you would lack you lack the the, the knowledge of what God has said about you. Mm-hmm. When you compare yourselves to other people, or you see other people comparing themselves to themselves, and be like I'm good, I'm great, I'm this, I'm that. It's like no, that it's not about you. It's really not about it's you. Not. If you understand that everything on this earth is not about you, you didn't create this earth. So why does it have to be about you? It doesn't. It's literally about glorifying God and glorifying his creation in a sense where you everything you do is about him. Everything you do, you're doing it onto him. And so when you, once again, it goes back to the same thing that Janice says. Once you turn the spotlight off of yourself and you begin to um, acknowledge that God is your source of strength and that he's the one who fully equips you with everything that you need, life will become so much better. Yep. And so much stress free, and you'll be living like you're flying on eagles' wings. La vida loca. <laughs> Literally, like you're flying on eagles' wings because it's just like you, you, you're depending on God to give you the strength to do what you need to do. But you know what? Honestly, mm-hmm. I think most people think that it's not enough, but God mm-hmm. is going to give you f- sufficient enough, enough, more than enough for you. Right? More there's an, yeah. all the resources in the world is enough. It's like enough. You put yeah. everything on this earth. He's already fully equipped you. Before you were so even born, he already, <laughs> he already knew what you needed and what you didn't need. Mm-hmm. He already given you everything that you need. So all the things that you need, you just need to literally ask and you'll activate what is yeah. inside of you. Once you ask God like to reveal something or to give you the power to do something or give me the strength, to do, he will give it to you. He will activate whatever he's, it's inside of you. And then you can go out. You, be, you begin to realize, oh, I didn't even know I had this. Yeah. Right? And he will restore it. Once you right. thought that was lost or what you... You share it to other. He will restore it tenfold mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. you. You won't even know. Like, right. oh, you gave ten dollars today. He'll give you ten dollars somewhere else. You right. find it somewhere else. Right. So. so I think this is a. I can go on and on about. Oh yeah, this. for sure. But, but I I hope we we gave encourage you some somebody. Yeah, encourage. So. And listen, it's not. I hope this is not just for the women because obviously we we want the women to be encouraged, but yeah. for men to realize you well. that you yeah like you do have issues of comparison everybody has self um, esteem issues everybody has self confidence issues um, but once you in, like literally attach yourself to the vine you remain in him you remain in him I promise you just try it just try to um, lean on him and depend on him and you will see the fruit yeah he will never fail you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. If you feel like you're inadequate, I'm telling you now, he'll give you the strength. He'll give you everything that you need to do what you want to do. He'll fulfill all your needs and your desires. As long as you align with his will and his calling on your life, leave the rest to him. Leave the rest to him. And you'll be so, like, you won't even be anxious anymore. You won't even worry. Obviously, the worry will come here and there, but you know I can run to my father and he will cover me, yeah. you know? So, um, once again, it's an encouragement for everybody. Go ahead and read the word. Mm-hmm. If you have any questions for us as well, just let us know in the comments, comments. below. I love to discuss with you. Right. I love having conversations. We want to have conversations so. with you guys. Um, if you have any questions about our story and how we dealt with certain things, mm-hmm. let us know in the comments below. Or you can also follow us on Instagram, the yep. Juxtaposition Podcast underscore and DM us and let us know anything that you want, um, any information, any more stories that you want us to share. Any questions um, at Obviously, all. we're not perfect. Just to remind you all we're not like, psychologists we're not sorry what she, i am yeah. i am i'm not <laughs> certified but i i'm you know she has some knowledge i have some knowledge <laughs> but honestly i it's a growing like it's literally a process for me yeah. i've through quarantine this is, has been a process for me and i'm still learning mm-hmm. there's not i haven't even reached the, the heights yet there's no ceiling there's no like sky limit going. it just keeps going on and on and on and i'm excited to even see what god has in store for me and for all of you guys as, as long as you keep sharing um um, <laughs> right subscribe, and subscribe as well subscribe. tell your friends and your families um Sorry. to 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 subscribe and fo- and follow us you know mm-hmm. um if you have anything that you want us to talk about let us know as well mm-hmm. we're always open, open to hear sure. um once again remain in him abide in him and he will abide in you yeah promise i tr- just believe us we are living testimony
for real. Yeah. Um, so once again, we appreciate you all. We love you all. Subscribe, comment, um, share, do all that stuff that we always tell you to do. Follow us on Instagram. And we will see you next week. Well, with Nana. I mean, if you don't want Nana there, you can tell us. And, and we'll we be back. He won't, he won't come back. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your week. And we love you and have a great one, I guess. Bye. Peace. <laughs>